Today's special word is providence. Am I supposed to be throwing this ball up in the air and catching it? And the answer is yes. How do I know? Because I'm throwing the ball up in the air and I'm catching it. I know that because it's happening. Now let's do a grand experiment. This is the extent of any skills that may or may not be marketable. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Up it goes and boom. I caught it. Was that God's will? Yes. How do you know? Because I caught it. Now, what if I had dropped it? Was that God's will? Yes. How do I know? Because it fell. Now, the question is, did I catch that ball all by myself, or did God make me catch that ball? And the answer to that is, I think that it was my brain, whatever sort of athletic abilities that he's given to me, I was able to do that, and he has given me the strength, he gives me the power through food, through oxygen, water. He gives me the strength and he keeps everything operating in this universe. He does all of that, but I threw the ball up and caught it. Now, is it possible that God sovereignly made that happen? You know, I threw it up and I was going to be like, here, but he went and he pushed it over there and somehow the ball fell into my hand. The answer to that is, yeah, he could have done that. Yes, he could have done that. The answer to the question, though, is do I know is uh, I don't have any idea. What does that have to do with the price of tea in Texas on a Tuesday? It has a lot to do with you deciding, is God speaking to me? Is God leading me? Is he moving me? Is he prompting me? Is he nudging me? Is he controlling me? Does he speak to me? Is he giving me divine impressions? I believe, despite, I understand, what the majority of evangelicals would teach today, I don't think that he does give divine impressions. I don't think that he speaks to us or leads us. I don't think that we have the biblical support for that. Furthermore, when we just consider the normal ways that we do stuff, like this, okay, like I'm, suddenly I, I look like Ed Sullivan. Why? Did God make me do this? I don't know, I just did it and maybe, I guess he could have, but it, the Bible doesn't say that that's the way he does it. I just do stuff and it's all underneath his providential control. So my conclusion is, don't think so. I don't think that he's doing that. So the question then is, what, what am I doing here? How do I know what God wants me to do? I believe there's a more sure word, a more certain word, a better way to make decisions and know what God wants you to do or not to do. The source for all of that decision making for life and godliness is, drum roll please, drum roll please, Whatever. The Bible. The Bible. Read through the Bible and over and over again, your word, your word, it's a what? It's a light to your feet. It's a lamp to your feet. It's a light to your path. It's an Amy Grant song. That's what the word is. It's, it does everything for you. So here's my question for you. Is the Bible perfect? If you're an evangelical Christian, you probably go, yes, the Bible is perfect. So if the Bible is perfect, it has everything we need, it's sufficient for life and godliness, knowing what you should do today, tomorrow, what you should say, what you shouldn't say, what you should buy, what you shouldn't buy, it's sufficient, it's perfect, why then would you need God to speak to you? You wouldn't. So if you claim that the Bible is perfect, and I'm sure you do, you don't need leadings, nudgings, promptings, speaking, talking to you, you've got everything you need in the sufficient, perfect word.